Magandang araw mga kahineral! Ating tunghayan ang isang halimbawa ng ODL class o Online Distance Learning kasama ang Grade 10 Newton na pinangunahan ng kanilang guro sa agham, Sir John Ray Catalan. Alright, so to start our discussion for today, so let us hear a prayer to be led by Janine Audrey and an attendance check to be led by I juries. All right, Janine, take it away. Let us all bow our heads and feel the presence of our Lord. Loving Heavenly Father, thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. We are truly grateful for them all. We praise you and thank you for watching over our land and people, especially in these perilous times. We are humbly asking for your guidance throughout this day. May you enlighten our minds and give us the strength to participate in today's discussion. May you extend your divine wisdom to our classmates, teachers, and presenter so that he would be able to impart effectively his knowledge to us all. Grant us your grace and peace to stay calm and to overcome fear. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right, thank you, Janine. Now, Juris. Hello, everyone. Good day. I'm happy to tell you that I am sorry to tell you that there are four absentees in our class today. Okay, so, or uh, probably they are not able to enter yet the Google Meet. Uh, probably let's give them time, but uh, for now to start our uh, discussion, so allow me to share my screen. All right, Juris, is my uh, screen okay? So can you see my screen? No, sir. All right. All right. Wait a sec. All right, what about the others? Can you see my uh, screen now? Yes, sir. We can see your screen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. Wala pa po, sir. All right. So, for those who haven't seen yet my screen, so you can check the list of the participants and pin it or pin the one that I am presenting so that you can see my shared screen. So, how are you going to do that? Again, just click the uh, participant here, the icon for the people, meaning showing everyone. And then look for my screen in which I am showing my presentation. All right, so uh, take note, I have two screens. All right, so. Here, so making sure that you pin this one, the one in which my name has a parenthesis of your presenting. So click that one so that you can see my shared screen. Okay. All right, are we clear now? Can we uh can everybody see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. All right, let us start. Yes, yes sir. So okay, this is going to be our first topic in advanced physics. Again, it's uh, me, Sir John Ray Catalan, your genius science teacher. All right, so here's what we're going to do. For uh, this topic, these are our learning objectives. The first is to define measurement and then differentiate base quantities from derived quantities of measurement and then enumerate the base quantities of measurement and describe the two systems of measurement. All right, so we have four objectives. So I think it's time to get physical. All right, so not really that kind of physical. So I want you to get your pen and paper. 
So let's see if you can still remember some of the different physical quantities that you discussed during the last three years in your physics class. All right, so here's what you're going to do. Simply identify the quantity mentioned in each item as well as the unit commonly used in expressing it. So there are at least 10 items. All right, and I'm going to give you two minutes to do that. So again, what you're going to do is identify the quantity and the unit commonly used in expressing it. All right, so time starts now. So you can write your answer in your paper. All right, so again, number one is about the change in velocity over change in time. Number two is the X of a 2D figure. Number three is the mass over volume. Number four is a push or a pull. Number five is one half of the product of mass times the velocity squared. Number six is mass times velocity. Seven is the energy of an object at rest. Number eight is distance over time. Number nine is the space occupied by an object. And number 10 is force times distance. All right, one minute. Thirty seconds left. Ten seconds. Four, three, two. And one. All right, let us check. All right, so let's hear the answer. So for number one, change in velocity over change in time, let's hear it from uh, Jehu. So when we say change in velocity over change in time, what quantity are we talking about? Sir, sir. Nagdalag po sa ipon ko, hindi ko po maano, nakita okay. ko po, no? Sir, uh, what about James? Sir, ano po yun eh? Uh, so, what could be our answer in number one? Change in velocity over change in time. Me, ano, meter per second squared and okay. seconds. And that quantity is? Well, that's right. The unit is meter per second squared. But what quantity are we talking about? Um. Anybody from the group? James is partly correct there. The unit Sir, may I add? Is right, meter Sir. per second squared. But what? Sir. About yes, sir. I'm sir. Mm. Yes, sir. Uh huh. Is it? It's already the change in velocity. Velocity answer for number one, sir. Oh wait. Mm -hmm. Remember, if there's already a change in velocity. Uh, acceleration. Sir. Start with letter A. That's right. It's acceleration. All right. Now, what about number two, the extent of a 2D figure? So it has a length and the width. So let's have Sandy. Um...
a 2D figure when there's a lens and a width. All right, can we call the help of Juan? Sir, two dimensional shapes or two D shape. Uh huh. Yes, that's right. But uh, in terms of that, if we are talking about uh, specific something when it comes to two D figures, because remember we also have the three D figures, right? So the extent, meaning it has a length and it has a width. So if we are going to multiply length times width, then we are going to get. Sir, sir, sir. We have to start with letter A. Sir, area, sir. Area, that's right. And we usually I express that in what unit? What unit do we usually express that? So area, we can have it either in meter square or cm square. What about number three? Twinkle. Twinkle. Sir. Is twinkle Sir, there? number three is uh, density, okay. sir. Sure. Density. Oh, that's right. Mass over volume is density and usually... It's gram per cubic centimeters or gram per ml. What about number four? A push or a pull? That's how 30. Force pusher. Force, that's right. And the unit? Jo Newton, sir. Newton, that's right. Or kilogram meter per second squared. What about number five? One half times mass times velocity squared. Let's have Sydney. Sydney. All right, let's call the uh, help of Alexa. Number five, one half of mass times velocity squared. Sir, kinetic energy po. Kinetic energy, that's right. And the unit is? In what unit do we express kinetic energy? Sir, joules po. All right, so, but we pronounce it as joule. Joule, not Joule, okay? Joule. All right, what about it is only mass times velocity? Aliyah. Momentum, sir. Momentum, that's right. And the unit is? What could be the unit of momentum? Sir, P. Uh, that's the symbol. But in terms of the unit, since mass is in kilograms and velocity is in kilogram meter per, per second. That's right. So it's kilogram meter per second. Next one, number seven, REM seed, energy of an object at rest. REM seed. Sir, potential energy, sir. Potential energy expressed in? Meter per second. Uh-huh. Energy. We're talking about energy, and you say it's potential energy. So the unit should be? Joule, sir. That's right. It's joule. It's uh, the same with kinetic energy. All right, thank you for that. Now, now, number eight, distance over time. Let's have a uh, question. Distance over time. Mm -hmm. 
Speed, sir. Speed. And the unit is? Meter per second. That's right. So usually it's meter per second or kilometers per hour or miles per hour. Now last two, number nine, space occupied by an object. So let's have Ivan. Sir, volume, sir. Volume, that's right. And usually expressed in? Cubic. Cubic. Yeah, you're almost there. It's cubic. Cubic meter. Cubic meter. That's right. So it's either cubic meter or cubic centimeter. Although we can also express it in milliliters or liters. And lastly, number 10, force times distance. Let's have Aubrey. Four times the suns. Aubrey, are you there? All right, let's have the help of Iana. Sir, work po. Work, that's right. And the common unit is? Joule. Okay, that's right. It's, again, you say it as joule, joule or? Joule. Uh, another air unit used is either newton, meter. And again, you say it as joule, not joule, okay? All right, so type in the chat box your score out of 10. So I think we need to work a lot in, uh, when it comes to physical quantities. So you need uh, a lot of remembering with the different units, quantities. So as we go on with our discussion. All right, now this time, let's try to investigate. So hopefully you can uh, recall now the different physical quantities. So this time, we are going to investigate the different measuring devices. So I do hope that you are familiar with some of the devices used when we are doing experiments or laboratory activities. So again, for two minutes, what you are going to do here is to identify at least 10 measuring devices that are shown in the next picture. Again, I'm gonna give you two minutes for that. So again, you can write your answers in your paper. So two minutes starts now. All right, last one minute. Thirty seconds. Ten seconds. Okay, time's up. All right, so Schwarz, can you name at least five from the picture shown? 
five um, measuring devices. Pa, uh, sir, uh, number one is funnel, number two is beaker, number three is test tube, the next one is spring balance, then okay. measuring cylinder, and then weighing balance. Okay, so most of your answers are correct, but uh, however, let us take note of test tube. Unless a test tube has calibrations, then that's the time that we can say that it's a measuring device. But other than that, it's more of a container rather than a measuring device. Okay, but the rest are uh, good. Now, what about uh, juries? So, can you name at least five more? Sir, um, weighing scale, measuring mm -hmm. cylinder, ring mm -hmm. balance, ammeter, ruler. Ammeter and ruler. Mm -hmm. Right, although this one is more of the meter stick rather than uh, the ruler. Okay. Hi. Sorry, sir. Oh, it's okay. All right, last one. Let's have Daniel. That's five. Danielle, are you there? All right, so let's ask the help of Ira. I'll choose another five measuring devices shown in the picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. test tube, measuring cylinder, thermometer, test graduated pipe. Okay, graduated pipe. All right, so take note of the different devices. Thank you for that. So here are some of the devices. So sure, some of you are familiar with the devices and some are not that familiar to you, like the spherometer and the screw gauge. But of course, as we go on, we are going to use these types of material in our virtual lab. Because remember, there's no face-to-face. -face. All we have is online class. All right. So I hope you're uh, still familiar with the different devices and also recalling now the different physical quantities. So for now, let's do quizzes. So again, to those who are using browser, go to quizzes.com. And to those who are using mobile phone, open your quizzes app. All right, so let's play a game in quizzes. All right, so here is our six-digit code, 941363. So I'm going to type it here. So again, it's 941363. All right, so we now have five. Part eight. All right, now Right, again, uh, sorry for that. So uh, they're now 44, 45. All right, so let us start now. Yeah, I mean. 
Good morning. All right, so many are already halfway through. Hello, Newton. Good luck sa inyo. Thank you po. Thank you po. Many are almost through. Hello, po, sir. Nawala po ata sir ang presentation. Ah, yes, po. Sorry, sorry, sorry for that. All right, okay, na po bang screen? Okay na, sir. Uh, sir po, my bad. All right, let's just wait for a few more to finish. My network issues po yung phone ko. Matagal po nag-save yung progress ko sa quizzes. Okay. So, we'll work on that later. Alright, so I think uh, we're done. So, uh, I'm gonna end the game now. So, may uh, sumasabot ba? Alright, so Christian and Sandy. So uh, let's see what happened to Alexa, Christine, and Janine later. Sir, tapos na po ako. Okay. All right, let's see. So in third place, we have Samantha, and the second is Juliana, and the first one is Morris. Okay, congratulations for that. So, oh, nice one. Morris got 100% correct. All right, so let's see. All right, so congratulations once again to Morris. So I think you have a good grasp of our topic. So, uh, but let's just check for the toughest question. So it's about uh, measuring the volume of a small bag. All right, and with longest question, it's also the same question. And uh, for the facts are at least nine questions with uh, four seconds and seven seconds. All right. 
and there's at least 56% of questions correctly, answered correctly. All right, so I think with uh, the result of our quizzes, I think you have a pretty good idea of what's our topic. It's all about for today. So let us now continue. So for now, let's start to watch this uh, video. But uh, be reminded that as you watch the video, take note of the different guide questions that we have here. For the first one is, what is meant by the term measurement? And number two is, what do you mean by the units of measure? Number three is, why are base units called as such? And number four, how can we come up with a derived unit? And number five is, what does the speaker mean when he said accepted units? All right, so again, take note of the different guide questions. <coughs> so I'll play the video now. All right, so I uh, hope you can hear the sound Welcome clearly. Welcome to Pro FIT's prep. This is part one of the lesson on units of measure. In this video, we will discuss various units of measure and we'll also introduce the SI system of measurement. To begin, let's define what a measurement is and what it actually means to measure something. Well, in science, a measurement is considered the assignment of a numerical value to an object's physical property. Measuring physical properties such as length, volume, and density is very common. For example, you might want to know the length of a line the volume of a sphere, or the density of a liquid. Whenever we take measurements, we also have to assign units to the numerical quantity in order to convey the relative size or magnitude of the property in question. For instance, if I said the length of my shoe was 10, you wouldn't actually know how long my shoe was because there would be no context for what the 10 represents. In fact, this measure would only make sense if the number 10 had a unit of measure to go along with it. So what is a unit of measure? In order to have accurate and reproducible ways to define magnitudes of length, volume, density, etc., scientists have developed various systems of measure. These systems are made up of units of measure which are basically standardized amounts of various physical quantities. The SI system is the international system of measure used by scientists. It is a very comprehensive system with many units of measure. However, we will only need to cover a few of these units in order to prepare for the T's. All right, so let's go back. So again, for the first part of the video, it has something to do with the terms measurement and units of measure so the speaker told something about uh, what these two means all right so i hope you can uh, still remember what uh, the speaker said so let us continue so to have the answers in by questions numbers three four and five so this time we'll check the si units of measurement Science involves taking measurements, looking at this data, and sharing data with others. Whether you are a chemist, biologist, an engineer, or even a medical doctor, you need a consistent way of communicating measurements like distance, mass, temperature, etc. The International System of Units, abbreviated S, allows people all over the world to speak the same language and measure. In this video, I will talk about three types of units of measurements in the the seven base units, the derived units, and then the accepted units. Up first, the seven base units. I call them the big seven because the SI system. All right, take note of this part. They are meter for length, kilogram for mass. All right, meter Second, length, kilogram mass. Second time. Ampere. Ampere, electric, electric current. Kelvin for thermodynamics. Kelvin, thermodynamics temperature. Mole for the amount of substance. Mole, amount of substance. And candela, luminous intensity. The next units are the derived units. These use the base units in a formula. So here Same we have the different the unit for area derived is units. Derived unit. In order to calculate area, you multiply length with width. 
Therefore, the unit is a square meter. It uses a base unit meter. Here's a partial list of the derived units. I'll leave a link for a more comprehensive list in the show notes. Finally, we have what are called accepted units. For example, in almost any high school science lab, you will measure volume using liters. Liters is an accepted unit that can be used with the SI units. In other words, it's accepted in most papers or journals, but it is not a base unit of the SI. Here's a list of some accepted units. Look for a more comprehensive list in the notes. If you want to know more about the SI system of <coughs> this playlist will help you. Thanks for watching and Moo Moo Map upload. All right. So let's go back now to the guide questions. So again, the first part was all about uh, defining the terms measurement and the units of measure. And then on the second part of the video, so it, uh, mentioned there the different base units and then how we can come up with a derived unit and what the speaker meant when he said accepted units. All right, so anyone can remember the meaning of measurement based from the video? Sir? Uh-huh. All right, so when we, share, uh, when we say measurement, All right, so Tyrone, can you read the meaning of measurement and also based from the video? Tyrone? Tyrone, are you there? All right, let's ask the help of Joyce. Measurement, sir, is an assignment of numerical value to an object's physical quantities or physical, physical property. Quantity. All right, so take note of the term numerical value, meaning it has number. So we assign a particular value to a property of a certain object, specifically physical property. And in coincidence with measurement, so by assigning numerical value, so just like when we try to measure the length or the volume or the density of a particular object, we also have to assign units. So meaning they go hand in hand. So we have the number or the numerical value and units. So just like the one used as an example in the video, so let's have here the size of the shoe. If we're only going to say 10, then 10 what? So is it 10 feet, 10 centimeters, 10 meters, or what? So that's why it's important for us to consider assigning units to the numerical value of that particular object's property. All right, so that's why we have here 10 inches. All right, so again, what is a unit of measure? So according to the video, let's have Samantha. Unit, units of measure, standardized amounts of various physical quantities. Okay, so take note of that term, standardized amounts. So meaning there is a particular set of values that we have to follow. So that's what we mean by the units of measure. And in terms of history, so later on we'll find out. So we have this what we call the SI system or the System International from France. So this one is used as a guide to determine what standardized amounts are we going to use in order to describe the measurement of a particular physical property of the object. So mm -hmm. from the uh, second video that we had, can you remember the seven basic units mentioned? So can you name at least one? Maxine. So from the video, it was uh, mentioned as the big seven. So what, what, uh, meter, what sir. All right. Meter is the unit for what quantity? 
Ano? Meter. For what quantity? Sir. Mm -hmm. Length, sir. All right, that's right. It's for length. Next one. Let's have uh, Alexa. Sir, kilogram po. Kilogram, the unit for what quantity? Mass. All right, that's right, mass. Next up, let's have Hannah. Second, sir. Second, four? For time. Time, that's right. All right, what about uh, Christine? Christine, are you there? Sir, mole. Mole, for? Sir, mole. Yes, that's right, mole. For what Amount quantity? Amount of substance. Amount of substance, that's right. Uh, next up, Ernie. Ernie, are you there? All right, let's ask the help of Franco. So give me another base quantity or base unit. Candela, sir. Candela, four. Luminous intensity, sir. Luminous intensity, that's right. Oh, that's the seventh one. Next up, let's have Clark. Sir, ampere po. Ampere for? Electric current. Electric current, that's right. So again, we say it as ampere, okay? Not really ampere. So ampere for electric current. Next up. So let's have uh, Riley. Sir Kelvin po. For Kelvin. thermodynamics temperature. That's right, for thermodynamic temperature. And the previous two mentioned a while ago, some amount of substance, mole, and dominoes intensity. So again, remember this big seven. These are what we call the base units. But remember the difference between the terms basic unit and base quantity. So when we say quantity or the base quantities, these are the physical quantities that we measure. So these, sorry. <coughs> These are the length, mass, time, and electric current, and so on. But when we say the unit, these are the meters, kilograms, seconds, amperes, and the likes. So going back with question number three, why is it named as such? Or why do we consider it as base units? So any idea? Why is it called as base units? So let's try to ask Desiree. Because it is the basic. So it's yes, it's, basic. Uh -huh, it's the basic. So meaning, it's like the fundamental, right? Yes. So meaning, when we say fundamental, what's going to happen if we are going to combine these fundamental units or these quantities? If we combine the base units, we can have the right units. That's right. So take note of that. So base units, these are the fundamental. So when we try to combine all this or some of these fundamental quantities, then that's the time that we can have the so-called derived units. Okay, take note of that. So again, remember the big seven or the seven base quantities and seven base units. So the brain has a question here. What about force, kinetic energy, and density? Oh, how do we consider these quantities? Base or derived? Derived. So let's have... Mm -hmm. Derived, derived. Alright, that's right. They are derived units. So remember, they are derived quantities. So they can be taken by combining the different base quantities we have. And again, uh, do not get confused with the term derived quantities and derived units. So when we talk about the units of force, kinetic energy, and density, that's the time that we call it as derived units. But if what we are talking about is the measurable 
property, then that's what we call as derived quantities. So still remember the formula for force. Jeo. So earlier, the, the reason why I asked you, remember? So still remember the, uh, the uh, formula in finding force? So force is mass times acceleration. What about kinetic energy? Let's have Angelica. Angelica, what's uh, our formula for kinetic energy? One one half times meter. Mm -hmm. Is it times meter? The times times what? Uh -huh. So it's one half. It's mass, not the meter, okay? So mass times velocity squared. And lastly, density. Sir. Mm -hmm. Square density is equals to mass over volume. All right. So with the symbol, Greek letter rho, to uh, denote the symbol for density, it's mass over volume. So again, how were we able to consider that these are derived quantities? Remember that force? With the formula F equals M times A, it's a combination of mass, length, and time. Since it's SI unit, Newton, is equivalent to kilogram times meter per second squared. So how did it happen? So remember, M stands for mass. And acceleration's unit is meter per second squared. And remember, we know that meter is the unit for length and second squared is a multiplication of two times. So that's why we have the base quantity time. So combining these three, that's why we are able to arrive at the derived quantity force. Now when it comes to kinetic energy, wherein we have one half mv square, it's also a combination of mass, length, and time, but of varying degrees. And its SI unit is somewhat different because it's in joule, and take note of the difference. In force, it's equal to kilogram meter per second squared. But in energy, it's kilogram meter square per second square. So there is a slight difference between the two. All right, and the last one, we have density, where um, the formula is mass over volume. So it's a combination of mass and three length. Because remember, volume, uh, the reason why I asked you a while ago, uh, it can be expressed in cubic centimeters or cubic meters. So meaning length is multiplied three times by itself. So that's why we have there as length cubed. <laughs> Alright, so now that we have the uh, base and derived units. Now let's try to have this one. So again, already your pen and paper. So this time, classify each quantity as either base or derived. So you just have to write either base or derived. So these five quantities. So I'm going to give you a minute to answer this one. And time starts now. Thirty seconds.
two, and one. All right, time's up. So let's check. So let's have curve in. Number one, amount of substance. Is it base or derived? That's right. It's base. Next up, feeling. Base, number two. Derived. Number three, derived, volume. sir. Joanne? Base, volume. sir. Is it base? Uh, derived. 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 That's right. Because it's length times three. Uh, sorry, length yes. cube. Next up. So let's have uh, Ella. Mm -hmm. So number four, luminous intensity is a base quantity. And last one, let's have Gen Z. Electrical resistance. Base po. Uh-huh. Is it base? Derived po pala. Derived. So do not get confused with the term electrical, okay? Because what's base is the electric current, not electrical resistance. All right, so kindly uh, put your name, uh, your score in the chat box. So we're five. Now, we've been talking about base and derived units. So what's, uh, what is this essence when it comes to the standardizing of measurements? So for that, let's try to watch again another video. And uh, as you watch, take note of these two guide questions. But the first one is, why did most of the countries follow the metric system of measurement? And the second one is, which countries still use the English system of measurement? So from these two questions, you can already, you can already say that there are two types of systems of measurement here, metric and English. So uh, this video is brought to you by TED-Ed. So let's try to uh, watch this one. What does the French Revolution have to do with the time NASA accidentally crashed a $200 million orbiter into the surface of Mars? Actually, everything. That crash happened due to an error in converting between two measurement systems, U.S. customary units and their SI or metric equivalents. So what's the connection to the French Revolution? Let's explain. For the majority of recorded human history, units like the weight of a grain or the length of a hand weren't exact and varied from place to place. And different regions didn't just use varying measurements, they had completely different number systems as well. By the late Middle Ages, the Hindu-Arabic decimal system mostly replaced Roman numerals and fractions in Europe. But efforts by scholars like John Wilkins to promote standard decimal-based measures were less successful. With a quarter million different units in France alone, any widespread change would require massive disruption. And in 1789, that disruption came. The leaders of the French Revolution didn't just overthrow the monarchy. They sought to completely transform society according to the rational principles of the Enlightenment. When the new government took power, the Academy of Sciences convened to reform the system of measurements. Old standards based on arbitrary authority or local traditions were replaced with mathematical and natural relationships. For example, the meter from the Greek word for measure was defined as one ten millionth between the equator and North Pole. And the new metric system was, in the words of the Marquis de Condorcet, for all people, for all time. Standardizing measurements had political advantages for the revolutionaries as well. Nobles could no longer manipulate local units to extract more rent from commoners, while the government could collect taxes more efficiently. And switching to a new Republican calendar with 10-day weeks reduced church power by eliminating Sundays. Adoption of this new system wasn't easy. In fact, it was a bit of a mess. At first, people used new units alongside old ones, and the Republican calendar was eventually abandoned. When Napoleon Bonaparte took power, he allowed small businesses to use traditional measurements, redefined in metric terms. But the metric system remained standard for formal use, and it spread across the continent along with France's borders. While Napoleon's empire lasted eight years, 
its legacy endured far longer. Some European countries reverted to old measurements upon independence. Others realized the value of standardization in an age of international trade. After Portugal and the Netherlands switched to metric voluntarily, other nations followed, with colonial empires spreading the system around the world. As France's main rival, Britain had resisted revolutionary ideas and retained its traditional units. But over the next two centuries, the British Empire slowly transitioned, first approving the metric system as an optional alternative before gradually making it official. However, this switch came too late for 13 former colonies that had already gained independence. The United States of America stuck with the English units of its colonial past and today remains one of only three countries which haven't fully embraced the metric system. Despite constant initiatives for metrication, many Americans consider units like feet and pounds more intuitive. And ironically, some regard the once revolutionary metric system as a symbol of global conformity. Nevertheless, the metric system is almost universally used in science and medicine and it continues to evolve according to its original principles. For a long time, standard units were actually defined by carefully maintained physical prototypes. But thanks to improving technology and precision, these objects with limited access and unreliable longevity are now being replaced with standards based on universal constants, like the speed of light. Consistent measurements are such an integral part of our daily lives that it's hard to appreciate what a major accomplishment for humanity they've been. And just as it arose from a political revolution, the metric system remains crucial for the scientific revolutions to come. All right, so that video is brought to you by Ted Ed. All right, so if we are going to consider the video when it comes to the uh, systems of measurement, it actually dates back to the 18th century. And basically, it started with the country of France. So thanks to Napoleon Bonaparte, who paved the way for the what we call as global conformity, we are now using what we call the SI units of measurement. All right, so let's just uh, check. So again, there are two systems of measurement. So again, uh, can you recall the two? Desiree? Yes, sir. Mm, the two systems of measurement. English. Um, English. System and metric system. Metric system. All right. So thank you. So remember, it wasn't that easy when it comes to standardizing a particular measurement. So they even used body parts during that time. But of course, we know that body parts are not all the same. For uh, it differs from one person to another. So that's why uh, by that time, around 1789, so starting with John Wilkins, trying to come up with a particular standardized system of measurement so that everything will be equal in a way. So but uh, let's just take note of the basic difference between the two. So when we speak of English system, so it is a system of measurement which grew out of the manner in which people secured measurements using body parts and familiar objects so take note of that term measurements using body parts and familiar objects so that's the uh, basic concept of english system while in metric system is an internationally agreed decimal system of measurement created in france in 1799 <laughs> so i'm sure you have heard of some of the units used in the uh, english system we have here the foot pound and second and that's why we have the common concept foot pound second to uh, take note of the english system now what was mentioned in the video we have they're actually mks so to those who are uh, familiar mks simply starts for a um, mass uh, sorry meter kilogram second so we usually use this one for larger quantities or for bigger quantities now if we are simply going to adapt it in a smaller scale or in smaller quantities, so MKS can also be used as CGS or the centimeter gram 
second. Now, going back, it has now been accepted internationally about the uh, metric system, but uh, these days still there are countries which use the English system. Can you name these three countries that are still using the English system, James? Uh, USA, Myanmar, and Laos. Is it Laos? It's an African country. So you're right with the first two, USA and Myanmar. Mm -hmm. But the other one is, starts with letter L in Africa. Liberia, po. That's right, it's Liberia. All right, so to this day, that's why if you are going to the US or if you will have time to go to the US, they are much comfortable using the feet measurement or a feet um, measure instead of using centimeter or meter scale. And then uh, yards and uh, miles like that. <coughs> so sorry for that. My uh, throat is not in sync. All right. And here we have the different prefixes that we use to standardize the metric system, which we are going to use over our next meeting. Okay, so I'm uh, sure you're familiar with some of the different prefixes, but uh, over, we're going to have this one by uh, next meeting. All right. And uh, here in our country, in the Philippines, we actually use more the measure, uh, the metric system of measurements. Although from time to time, we also use the English system. And now that's what we are going to talk about next meeting on how to convert one system of measurement to another. So we can have English to metric or metric to English, or we can also have it by English to English and metric to metric. Okay, so for your hands-on task later this afternoon, so in relation to our topic for today, here's what you're going to do. So the first is to construct a simple collage of the different product labels and classify the units used in labels as basic or derived. And for the second part, you have to create a simple concept map that would show your understanding of measurements and the different types of physical quantities and units of measurement. So don't forget to hand in your uh, activity in our Google Classroom later. So do you have questions about our uh, topic for today? Ivan, do you have some questions? Sure, well, All right, so uh, what about Janine? Answer. All right, so I hope everything is clear for today's discussion. So uh, with that, so let us uh, finish our discussion for today, but do not forget, as a part of our post-assessment for today, so go to this link later, so tinyurl.com so slash T01 measurement. All right, so to assess or to check your understanding of today's discussion. So with that, so that ends our discussion for today. I will see you next meeting.